Hello, hello. Um, yeah, looking forward to today's session with Petronella, where um, we're going to be talking about the different ways in which we are privileged. And uh, yeah, we're, we're just going to rant. Don't expect like a lot of concrete takeaways from today's session. Uh, it's just something that we talk about all the time. We are internet friends too. <laughs> Um, basically, my lives are me introducing all of you to my internet friends. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're, we're just going to talk about privilege. Before Petronella comes on board, I'm going to introduce her to you. Petronella calls herself an ally in training, originally from Sweden. Uh, she currently lives in Mumbai with a bachelor's degree in social work and halfway through a master's in gender studies. Uh, for the past few years, she has been reflecting on and questioning what it means to be in the privileged position she finds herself in as a white woman, but also on the grounds of ability, gender, sexuality and class. Yes, you are gagging. My shirt is from Gagged. <laughs> it, uh, I have finally actualized my uh, dream of becoming a Nagin. I'm very excited. I... I'm going to see if Petronella is here and then I'm going to add, yay, she is. I'm just going to add her. Yeah, yeah I know, I know my shirt's good. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> awesome. I, I love your curtain in the background. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's very blue, green, turquoise is like my color. So I thought like <laughs> perfect background. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. So I was just introducing our audience to you when I was uh, telling them how you've been on this journey where you've been reflecting about how the different ways in which you are privileged and what you can do with that privilege. And I know you and I have had a lot of conversations about uh, what does it mean to be an ally and uh, mm. how can we frame a little bit of that as bystander intervention. Uh, yeah, so, so exactly. I thought yeah, we could just have like a conversation <laughs> that we've been in the past few months that we've known each other and, and we yeah. could share that with our audience. Yeah, yeah for sure. Like, um, I, I I call myself like an uh, ally in training for a few different reasons because like firstly is because this journey is fairly new to me or relatively new and I know like how that could <laughs> sound like I'm totally aware like uh, the luxury of being able to even avoid dealing with these kind of issues like um but but we're here to pro talk about like uh privilege and, and that is my honor situation uh but i also call myself like an ally in training because it's, it is like exercise right like i i feel like um um you can't really say that oh tomorrow i'm going to be fit and i'm going to be fit forever right like uh it doesn't work like that and it in it, it this kind of work is continuous work so in that sense yeah i mean training to become a good ally or you know uh and i'm i'm um like it's, it's a lot of introspect that needs to to happen like uh reflecting on my position and how i benefit from the system and obviously there are uh, a different in acknowledging your privilege compared to working on your fitness. Uh, it, it is not a feel good development practice. Uh, <laughs> whereas exercising for your fitness is exactly that it's for you and for your health. But here it's rather like, um, hard work really and it's not gonna be glamorous and, and, and nice, unfortunately, or fortunately. Um, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely right. And it's it's a practice. It's not a state of being. You can't just call yourself an ally. It's not a label that you can just give yourself and be satisfied mm. with. You need to like wake up every day uh, and, and put it to practice. Like how are you going to be a good ally or how are you going to show solidarity today? Mm. Um, and I was yeah. doing another show the other end and they asked me what it meant for me to be um, a good ally. And I, I just, I don't know, I find this word ally problematic. 
because it's mm. a reduction of the amount of work that you need to do it's not just like standing by someone yeah. um it's not just oh like like you very rightly said just checking your privilege and oh that that's it you're you're a great mm. ally just because mm. of that um or or you've like tweeted something right and and that's good enough that you're a good enough yeah but like the the aim is not to affirm that you are a good person it's not to affirm that you are a good white person or an a good upper caste person or even you know um like oh not all all men kind of good man kind of good person man kind of thing <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> right uh It, it it is hard work and and you're going to feel uh you're not going to feel sh- good about it you will feel guilt and sadness and and all kinds of feelings but we need to look at what that uh what the bigger payoff is you will be able to hopefully leave the world a better place than how you found it uh and this is about you sure but it's also about the the systems we are part of uh it is a thing that is needed to be done right yeah absolutely and and i also thought that the conversation that we were having in the, in the morning about uh like the privilege of having domestic help and uh, mm. the, the privilege of having somebody and therefore like extending your time literally right buying time your time from somebody else mm. uh, and and what that means and i i thought that was an interesting conversation also because you you brought up what it means to be a domestic uh, help in india and and you also spoke a little bit about you know how there's no uh, potential for them to get unionized because there's this constant pressure of us being family and you know us being yeah. other um, yeah. and i think that you spoke about how there are no formal contracts for for a for a domestic help for instance uh, if if mm. you talk a little bit about that um, Why no, well, that's why really I brought up the the topic with with you, uh, as I feel like I know so little about it, um, like how the situation is here, and it's some, it's so new to me. Uh, like, sure, there is uh, people that hire help in Sweden, and there is uh, subsidized kind of tax. uh reduction for having that kind of maybe once a month thorough cleaning of the house or uh cleaning the windows or even uh tax reductions for renovating the bathroom or stuff like that that is the closest um but the critique against that is usually uh that it becomes women hiring other women so they can go on with their career and and then it comes a very liberal kind of view of what equality is especially gender equality between uh men women very binary but um in in how what it means to be equal is to be equal a uh, full time working career oriented man uh and to get that you need to get rid of the uh domestic chores that you are forced to do at home instead of as an equal couple you know like the they do it together right uh so it becomes a very class thing um instead of working on or looking at it as a, a gender equality kind of thing yeah absolutely um how have you benefited uh, as, as as a white yeah. woman see so i have um is very difficult like i I don't think I even started to scratch on the surface of what in what way and how I'm benefiting from a white supremacy kind of or uh white privilege. I have actually I found a great quote from uh a women's studies scholar Peggy McIntosh if I could read that. Like um cuz it gives a little feeling of why I'm sort of oblivious to to it so she says uh or she explains why privilege like this i have come to see why privilege as an invisible package of unearned asset that i can count on cashing in each day but about which i'm meant to remain oblivious why privilege like an invisible weightless knapsack of special provisions assurances 
tools, maps, guides, code books, passports, visas, clothes, like everything, uh, emergency gear and black uh, and blank checks. So white privilege here has really protected me, like in this way and protected me from understanding what it means to be non-white. Yeah. So like uh, it is in this sense, like less serious of perks and um, ability uh, to move unrestricted. Like it's, it's rather, you know, you can move through borders, crossing borders and barriers that non-white people and marginalized kind of group are stopped at, right? So I've arguably benefited a shit, like, like so much from it without even knowing half of it. <laughs> Oh, by the way, you're allowed to swear. So shit is fine. <laughs> shit, fuck everything. Like, yes, so I've benefited a lot without even knowing half of it. That That is my, my point here. Like, um, but it also means like, just that you don't know, that you don't see it, um, means that you cannot begin to dismantle like you can't just matter something that you can't see uh, and you cannot shell into what you don't understand. So, so that is like, sure. I'm aware I've started to, uh, check my privileges. Uh, cause that is the, the start of it to be able to even change. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, I resonate with this so much as, uh, you know, a woman from a dominant caste and, um, uh, I mean, it's only like not so long ago, maybe a couple of years ago when I kind of began my journey to be more anti-caste, to be more vocally anti-caste. I think I was caste neutral previously because mm. that, that is very violent as well. When, when you take a neutral stance, you are, you're, you're basically taking the side of the oppressor and, and you're contributing sure. to the oppressor. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think like it's when I learned more about intersectionality is when I could kind of see the different ways in which I'm both the oppressed and the oppressor. And mm. uh, I, I wanted to ask you this question, like, how does that pan out when, I mean, I mean I'm sure mm. as a woman, I've like been through a lot in life, right? And, and I, I read mm. this one quote on Instagram, which went, privilege is not about what you've been through. It's about what you don't have to go through. Um, and sure. I thought that was yeah. brilliant, right? Uh, so, so how does it pan out? this whole oppressor and oppressed dichotomy? So I think I want to, like, we have this idea, right, that um, someone being racist or cautious, uh, and they're over there, like, they are, like, it's the extreme, the bad guy over there as a group. Uh, and we, we, we're trying to prove so hard that we're not belonging to those bad guys, those extreme uh, white supremacy, what, uh, KKK in the US or, you know, the far right and their leaders and the monsters like, what, Hitler. We, we want to demonize them and they are so extreme and distance ourselves from that. But I, I, I want to see maybe it more like a spectrum, right? Like we all, whoever benefits from these systems uh, are all the way, like we are still on that spectrum, even if we're not, without naming any names, but you know, the, 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 our leaders around the world or, or whatever uh, the top of the top that we believe in the supremacy, you know? But, um, yeah, so I'm I'm thinking um, that looking at being the oppressor and the oppressed connects to to that, uh, yeah. and the sense of being white then for me and facing sexism for being a woman uh, yeah. is obviously complex. Uh, is is very uh, is not straightforward or black and white uh, whatsoever, and um arguably then doing better than many say for example immigrant men or even uh, a man of color or uh, that grew up and are Swedish uh, and I'm arguably doing better than them uh, so like 
you can use like an intersectional intersectional lens that you said like to to help us structure and frame that a little um and and class then is another marker and what am i i arguably grew up working class but due to my education and uh the career i can see for myself puts me more in a middle class setting and that journey like this class journey is arguably then again easier for me as a white woman compared to anyone else but then we come back and i have a white man that has exactly the same education and work experience as me that probably will get higher pay so yeah that will be my answer to to that mm. Yeah, absolutely, and I feel like we often are able to, like, like I was saying previously as well, we're able to see our the many ways in which we are oppressed because it it impacts us uh, directly, and we're able to also, I mean, once you kind of start thinking about it, you're also able to see the microaggressions that you're meted out with on a day to day basis. Whereas, mm-hmm. like, you you, it's very difficult to shift that lens uh, and and to see the different ways in which you might be contributing to the oppression. and often this is a mistake that allies make right where um they kind of want to be yes they want to support a movement that is very required please do that with your privilege um share your privilege use that social capital financial capital whatever kind of capital you have with um to to amplify the voices of those who've been marginalized right but yeah time there is this tendency a to co-opt the movement and and make it about them um or or kind of like that othering like like you rightly said oh i am not that bad guy i'm with you and um l- look at me like at this protest right i that must mean i'm a i'm a good person yeah am i saying don't show up to protest and you don't raise your voice not at all but like being aware of that and i'm not mm. expecting a cookie and you and i talk about this a lot as well where yeah <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and- and something that you said uh, previously to me which was that you know you need to be an ally when nobody is watching and mm. uh, and and not not just like your performative wokeness yes that that has your performative wokeness also has some utility but but yeah. being an ally, truly an ally in that sense is is very um, important um, mm. which brings me to my last question to you then how do we check our privilege like what what can that journey look like um So for for like the reasons we've been saying like the whole we are taught to stay oblivious of our positions um it's easy when we are faced with that and confronted with those privileges it's easy to feel uh you know like oh oof, uh, no but I'm not this bad person and and all exactly what we've been saying um so it might be very difficult to check our privilege because of that um but it is not and when you started to sort of reflect on on your posi- uh, position and privilege uh you, you might feel like a lot of guilt and i've been stuck in in that phase like um you feel so guilty or oh, i'm 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 having such an easy good life like what can i do and oh, all of that like um but you can't sort of change where you have been like all you can do is to focus on how to move forward and you're not going to empower others by disempowering yourself um and like bell hooks I have another quote like privilege is not in and itself bad right uh what matters is what you do with your privilege and this we've been keep hearing and she also says we have to share our resources and take uh directions about how to use our privileges in a way that empower those that lack it like we keep hearing that at least in our circles maybe um but we don't have to be perfect like and we will not be perfect and and you will have to again and again and again and and it will be very uncomfortable and you will be wrong and you will get shit for it like you will meet people from the mar- marginalized groups of people that you're trying to support and help um but you will mess up uh so 
uh, we need to just focus on the truth, uh, introspect, see yourself in the mirror and, um, you know, um, uh, recognizing the, the privilege is the first step, right? Um, this, yeah. that's one thing like just, um, what, like it's, um, learn to listen and all these basic stuff, right? <laughs> Okay. No, um, and also like, it's okay that I feel guilty um, as a cis woman, for instance, right? Um, it's, it's okay that I feel guilty as somebody who's very normative looking, who's able-bodied. It's okay to feel guilt for those things because when you see just so much suffering around you and so much pain around you, um, it's okay for you to think that you have it easy and that's, and when you can recognize the unfairness in, in mm. how easy you have it, like like you were saying, that's a, that's a good place for you to start reflecting on on your privilege. Yeah. And, um, guilt is fine. Um, guilt will come with the process. Yeah. And but we can't beat ourselves up also, because then suddenly it becomes about us. Like oh, yeah. like oh, we feel bad, and we make you know the, the others uh, take care. Oh, don't cry and and all that, and that doesn't yeah. help yeah. either. So educate yourself. Like do these yeah. questionnaires to to check and confront your biases. Like yeah. all these kind of things. Um, so I'm I'm I found this great book that I share with you also. Uh, that is called Me and White Supremacy by uh, Laila Saads. So she has this workbook um, of 28 days that helps you reflect and uh, identify one's own place and privilege in the system. So they touch upon white fragility, like tone policing, uh, tokenism, white silence and apathy and all that kind of thing, it's like in 28 days. And uh, I just started that and I'm really looking forward to the pain and the, the sorry, it maybe sounds weird, but you know, that is a good way to start. Educate yourself, check yourself, like really. And do the labor yourself, like mm. don't expect the people who you are oppressing, whether intentionally or unintentionally, to do the labor to explain why you are, um, you, you know, you're, you're, you're in the wrong in that sense. And also mm. like stop telling people whose oppression that you are responsible for, whether directly or indirectly, how they are oppressed or how they should experience. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like there was this one, one random dude that I met on Bumble who was, who was telling me how like women have it so bad, but why the fuck are you telling me? I know it. You go talk to your dude, bro. And, and, and don't tell me the different ways in which, you know, I have it shitty. Like how, how is that helpful? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Please educate yourself, do the labor yourself. And like, I mean, mm. this is that Petronella and I are kind of comfortable doing it for each other where we uh, try and like call each other out on, on, on our bullshit. Um, we're kind with each other while we do it, but we're, we're, we, we are constantly calling each other. Yeah. Um, that's something that is a good practice to have with your friends as well. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You and also, we're not expert here. We are just trying to navigate around it and become good persons. No, at least decent human beings, uh, right? Like, uh, yeah, I like cookies, but I make them myself. <laughs> uh, do you do you have any final words of wisdom that you would like to leave our audience? Three people who stayed on till till the end. Like, thank yeah, you so <laughs> really nice. Um. I mean, after all, like, um, this is nothing new. Like, the whole idea of, of supremacy of all kinds is nothing new. We've seen a surge uh, in interest and, and we see, like, Black Lives Matter protests and, and all these kind of things. Uh, but marginalized people have been resisting and uprising and protesting for centuries. Um, and if, if that weren't enough, like if we uh like if that would hadn't it hasn't worked already if that worked like we would have seen some kind of change so the missing link is really us like <laughs> the, the privileged ones uh and and it's up to us to to do that deeper honest ongoing 
inventory of our relationship with that white supremacy or, or, or caste or whatever is the thing. Uh, so stop cribbing and, and, and get to work. <laughs> Get to time work. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for uh, yes. starting up this session, Ella. And I hope like we can catch up again on another live yeah. and maybe delve deeper into some of the things that we touched upon today. That would be uh, lovely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good friends. Over and out. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.